nevertheless, what was happening was um, there were a bunch of people who were dying of HIV. Nobody knew what was going on. Everybody was just getting scared. Like, oh my God, is this a cancer? What is this that's happening? So, um, and specifically, it was started, I mean, we started seeing it among gay men. Okay. So, PT Foundation just started from a bunch of students, not students, a bunch of people, young people, who wanted to make a difference. And, and that's hopefully how you guys will start sometime. Is that, you know what, you see some problem, you say let's just do something about it, maybe it turns into something bigger, and if it doesn't, you still have made an impact. Okay? So, what ended up happening is that they started, you know, a group, and they started a telephone hotline, where anybody who had questions about HIV who was really, who were scared, they started providing some information, whatever information they had, on treatment, on support, on addressing their fears, making sure that they don't commit suicide, things like that, they were helping them out with. Okay? Um, and we still continue that particular service today. But fortunately, we have other services. So what we're doing now is we are minimizing, minimizing the rate of HIV. We don't want you know people to get HIV. It's not something fun to have. Um, we want to we improve the quality of people with HIV. We want to empower the community, and we want to reduce uh, discrimination. So, um, just give me a uh, show of hands. How many of you guys know somebody that has a chronic condition? Not HIV necessarily, like diabetes, epilepsy, depression, uh, Crohn's disease. How many of you guys know somebody, you or somebody else? I'm sure that most of you guys know somebody. You guys know somebody? Yes? Nobody in your family, your grandmother, has any heart problems, anything, anything? Anything counts. Okay. I'm presuming there's a lot more, but uh, but my point is, is that if, a, if somebody says, oh, I have diabetes, somebody can share that they have diabetes. It's not a big deal. Okay? If somebody says, I have cancer, well, it's a big deal to have cancer, but you, it's not something that you would be Oh my God! Somebody, everybody else shouldn't find out that I have cancer, right? Um, it's not to say cancer isn't any better. Better cancer really sucks as well. But um, one of the things that makes HIV different is that if you have this chronic condition, you don't. Many of you wouldn't want other people to know. That's a, that's the big difference. And why do you think people might not want to know? Can anybody guess why? You, why would you want to tell somebody that you have HIV? Anybody? Sexually transmitted. Okay. So what will happen if it's sexually transmitted? Why do I not want to tell people that it's sexually? Why would I not want? To, what does sex have anything to do with the fact that it's HIV? I guess like why would I not want to tell it because I got it through sex? Any particular reason? Because maybe it's it's unprotected sex. So maybe your partner has had sex with somebody else. So for those people who are conservative, meaning that you know they are thinking that my partner and I will both be virgins. I don't know how many of you guys think that. But for those of people who do think that, when you have HIV, that has not been, that is not the case. It means that when you were married, one of you have had sex before marriage, which I know would be a big deal in a country like Malaysia. Am I correct? How many of you can imagine if your parents knew that you were having sex, how would they react? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so the last thing you want to do is tell your parents that I have HIV. Okay? Maybe if you get another disease, you might be okay with telling your parents. But if you have HIV, the, your parents, maybe some adults, other people, you don't want them to know. Okay? That's what we call their stigma, this discrimination. Okay? Now, how many of you think that if you have HIV, you will die from HIV? Just, you know, raise your hands. If you think that, you know, you, I have, if I get HIV, I'm going to die within the next two years, five years, ten years. How many of you guys think that? Okay, so 
if you were to find out you have HIV, how would you react when you think you're going to die? How would you be really scared? And maybe some of you wouldn't want to take medication, okay? Because you will think, oh, I'm going to die anyways. What's the purpose? Well, let me tell you one thing. Fortunately, we have medications out there that you can live a really, really long life, up to 90 years old, 95 years old, if you take your medication. And you can actually not transmit it to somebody else if you take your medication and your virus level is low. So that's one thing that's amazing. Unfortunately, many people don't know that. People think, oh my God, this is a death sentence. They think, I don't want to get tested. I don't want to know. Better not knowing than knowing that I'm going to die soon. That's their perception. Okay? So, uh, so one of the, uh, so why is it important to know? Why is it important that I tell you that it's not a death sentence? Can anybody guess why? Okay. Because it would reduce the fear of having HIV. I'm not saying that you should go out and get HIV and it's not a big deal. It really does suck to have HIV. Okay, we have support groups to have that. But get tested. It's really important that you get tested. Because there's support groups out there, there's medication out there, and uh, you know, with medication you can live a very long life. With medication and your knowledge, you cannot transmit it to others. You can reduce the likelihood. So it's really important. And sadly to say that there are people that we know have died of AIDS just because they didn't take their medication. That's it. You know, it's like having high blood pressure and you didn't take your medication and you're wondering, why did your mother, your friend not take their medication? Why are they not taking their medication? You know? And it's really, really sad because the medications are out there, you know, for the Malaysian, um, you know, the medical system here, medication can be free. Uh, Sulay Bulu is an amazing hospital, by the way. Um, and uh, they do an amazing job with uh, HIV uh, um, patients. So there is treatment out there. There's a lot of stigma as well, which is why we have our services. We are also there to help out. Other NGOs are there to help out so that we can calm your fears down, so that you don't get depression, so that you don't you stay on your medication. Okay, so yes, so these are um, our objectives. Um, okay, so we work with really um, these vulnerable communities. Sex workers, drug users, people who live with HIV, MSM. MSM means men who have sex with men. Okay, all right, so this is, I mean, they include gay men, bisexuals. This is reality. Okay, I know that some of you are giggling, some of you are, you know, this is reality. Okay, I know that some of you are giggling, some of you are, you know, unfortunately, I haven't met many gay men, but I can tell you that there are amazing people. Okay? They're actually pretty amazing people. They're pretty, uh, I mean, they're normal. Even transgenders, you know, if you have men who dress up as, as females, you know, I've talked to them and I don't, I, I just see them as female. You know, they're, they're just my girlfriends. They're, they really are. They like dressing up. They love things. They love everything. I mean, you get to know different people from different areas and you get to know and they'll open up your eyes. Which is the reason if you want to intern here, it might be a good thing to do. It'll really open up your eyes. Because I was like, you guys, I was, I, at uh, your age, and maybe a little bit younger, I was like, gay men, transgenders, what are you talking about, you know? Um, so yeah, so we have MSN, we have transgenders. Um, Vulnerable communities. They're vulnerable because they want to hide. They don't want other people to know. Or if other people find out, their parents, their friends don't want to do it. So imagine if you're one of your guy friends, you know, realizes or has always realized that, you know what, I'm a woman and starts dressing like a woman, starts wearing. Would you stay friends with them? Would you stay friends with them? Look at your guy friends. Would you stay friends with them? Would you say, I don't want to be near them anymore? If one of your guy friends told you he's gay, or one of your friends that are girls tell you she's gay, would you stay friends with them? Would you honestly not judge them at all? Now, 
if you can say that you don't want to judge your friends and you are completely fine, then that friend is very helpful. Okay? And these guys, the reason why I'm telling you this is that being gay, being gay HIV is, um, it can happen to gay men, straight people, people who are not gay, um, anybody. It, it is sexually transmitted. But for some reason, it is a bit, it is more common among uh, MSM, men who have sex with men and transgenders. Okay? So those are the vulnerable communities. Um, transgenders, because many of them end up, uh, you know, uh, get shunned from society, they don't get jobs. They're very, I, have, I know a transgender who's a doctor, and he would never have guessed that she's a transgender. She's a doctor, she's really smart. Um, somehow she made it. But many people, they find out they're transgender, or they're very obviously looking like they're transgender, and they can't get jobs. And as a result, they end up becoming sex workers. So, so, and then when you're sex workers, there's sexual transmission. There's all these different issues. There are sex workers who, uh, who are drug users or, you know, for whatever reason they use drugs, you know, um, they just got into the wrong crowd or they had depression or some type of issue before in their lives and as a result they started using drugs and then they became dependent. The reason why I'm telling you guys this is that everybody has their own life story. And you don't want to look at somebody and just say, God, that person's a drug user. What a loser. He just ru ruined his life. Because the reality of the situation is, if we were in that circumstance, there's a good chance we might have been a drug user as well. Okay. If we were, if I was gay, I might have, you know, um, had so many issues. I might have had unprotected sex. I might have, you know, uh, you know all these issues that come up. If I was a transgender, same thing would happen. My, my family would definitely not want to have to do anything with me, unfortunately. And I'd probably get a hard time having a hard time getting a job. So I'd be stuck here. And some, some of us would be doing sex work. And some of the people that we have at PT Foundation, who have been at PT Foundation before, or now or before, they were sex workers. But, I mean, that's something you know in their past. But they're completely normal. They know how to use computers, they, they know about, you know, finance, financial issues and how to deal with things and they run the, the organization. They're really, you know, normal. Everybody's normal. So, uh, well, except for me, I'm not a little bit. My husband says I'm not normal. But, <laughs> um, so, okay. And then the last group here is people with, living with HIV. This is the group that I particularly deal with. But people living with HIV are really scared to tell that other people will find out that they're HIV positive. Okay, and I specifically deal with mothers and children. Okay, um, the mothers that I deal with, they found out that they were HIV positive, many of them when they were pregnant, because when you're pregnant, you're required to get tested. Um, many of them found out because their husbands were so sick that they found out. Many of them were drug users, and somehow the other the doctor decided that let's get them tested. Whatever reason it is, um, uh, so these mothers, their, their mothers, they find that they have HIV. Unfortunately, some of their children sometimes can get HIV. Fortunately, with medication, if you're diagnosed with HIV and you take your medication, very likely chance that you can have a child without HIV. Again, this is really important to know, that if you are diagnosed with having HIV, if you take your medication, most likely, you take your medication properly, take care of yourself, there's a high chance, very high chance that your child will get HIV. And also that you will live a long life. Okay. Again, I don't want this to mean that you can get HIV, it's not a big deal. HIV is a big deal. But understanding that we are with support, you can, you can lead a happy and healthy life. Okay? If you are able to be take the initiative. If I take up too much time, just let me know. Um, so again, these are, I kind of covered this as well. We have misconception that HIV is a death sentence, so people don't want to get tested. We, um, they don't want to be associated with HIV. We, we've had people coming to us, coming up to us and saying they've lost their jobs. Sometimes there are employers who require that you that you get HIV tested for HIV. They just it's a part of their requirement blood test or whatever. And as a result, they find out that oh, this employer, this employee has HIV. 
and for some reason they're fired. You know, one person was up for promotion and they had to get tested and then got fired. So you don't want to be, you know, it's not something that people are big fan of. And then unfortunately children, this is something that we've seen, is that uh, parents are so protective of their children that they wouldn't want their own children to play with an HIV uh, infected child. Sometimes they even know that, oh my God, my child, that, that HIV cannot be transmitted through hugging, through kissing, anything. But they still wouldn't want their children to play with an HIV positive child. It's just so much fear resonating attitude that it's just, you know, it's sad to see. To see. So we had um, some children who quit school they're five years old, six years old. Imagine, I mean, you have nephews, nieces, kids. Imagine them just people not liking them, saying, oh, my mother told me not to be next to you. Things like that happening, and this is reality. Okay. Is anybody sleeping, or do they need to get up? Okay, well, if you do need to get up, then let me know. I'm not gonna judge, you don't judge. Um, our way of working, I hope you guys have realized, Third one is non-judgmental. We really are non-judgmental. Um, we try to empower people, meaning that they can stand up so that you know we are not spoon feeding. We are letting them know we are, you know, building their confidence that yes, despite your situation, you can be anybody, you can do anything. That you can take your medication and be okay. That if you were a sex worker, now you're, you know, you can get out of that such situation. Or for people who are sex workers, stay as sex workers. We give them condoms so that they can continue their work safely. Okay? So we're, uh, because we are, we, we try to keep it from the community, we are highly, we have a lot of volunteers um, that help us run the organization. Frankly, without volunteers, our program would not exist. And uh, even more importantly, we don't have money. <laughs> so we need volunteers. Um, we're an NGO these days actually don't have money. So, uh, go ahead and uh, if you're students, you might not be able to afford a lot, so at least you can afford your time. And, uh, and we do a rights-based approach to health. So what that means is that we believe that, um, you know, gay men, transgenders, uh, people living with HIV have a right to attend school, to work, have a right to, to, to be comfortable. Because if they are comfortable, then they can seek treatment from us. If they are mentally strong, then they will, they will either make sure that they don't get HIV, you, you know, don't practice unsafe behaviors, or they will, you know, get, get better. I see someone falling asleep here. <laughs> Sleepy, it's okay. Um, sorry, um, okay, so, well, okay. How do you think uh, HIV can be, oh, Okay, so I'm going to go really, really quickly. Um, like I said, HIV cannot be uh, transmitted through saliva, urine, tears, mosquito bite, animals cannot be transmitted. If you're in the same room with somebody with HIV, they cannot be transmitted. Unless you have unprotected sex with them and they're not under medication, they're not. Um, okay? How does HIV transmit? Through unprotected sex, needle sharing, that's like heroin, you share needles. Um, and uh, mother to child, but again, mothers with proper treatment, the likelihood of transferring it to your child is very small. Okay? So this is just uh, something I'm going to skip over. Um, we still get HIV, uh, I don't know how you can see this, but about 3,500, 3,500 every year we diagnosed with HIV. It became reduced. There was a time when drug users, many of them got HIV, and then Malaysia, uh, finally adopted this thing of, you know what, let's give them clean needles. If they're going to, you know, use drugs, then at least they can do it safely and not and get HIV. A lot of people weren't a big fan of this because they're like, oh, are you promoting drug use by giving them free needles? But this ended up actually helping out. So, yes, so now uh, it's plateau, it's no longer on the rise, but every year about 3,500 people get it. <laughs> And this is, these are some more numbers. How many people in Malaysia have it? About 100,000. Okay, so that's a lot of people who have it. Um, but, uh, and 